All right, I'm gonna show my setup for running the boat. I'm uh, not in the water, so this would be how you run it in the driveway. Make sure you turn it on all the way. So we're turning the water on here and we're filling a bucket. And um, I just take this hose that attaches to the inlet right there out of the lake, uh, and I disconnect it from there, put it in a bucket, and loosen it there so that it can turn naturally and just sit the bucket right here. Sits right next to the engine, and once it gets high enough here, uh, it works real good. Let's me know. I want to see that water level pretty high. When it's running, it'll actually suck it in faster than the hose puts it out. Um, and uh, But if it's idle, and it won't go fast enough. So here we are. Let's see if it fires right up. It should fire up on the first crank. It's been running really good. So we'll see what it does. Let the water get up high there. Watch out, Johnny. You're going to get blown. You're going to get water on you. All right, here we go. Watch out, Anna. Yeah, it's been running really good, so I haven't run it yet today, so that's pretty good for our first start. Just change the oil. I want to make sure the oil pressure is coming up. We got plenty of oil pressure. I think we're good. Give it a little bit of gas here. Yeah, actually run a lot better. Um, I just changed it and uh, I uh, had a pretty good knock. Just a ticking. And I uh, put some shell Rotella in it and I like this a lot. Wow, I, you know, it's easy to kind of have placebo effect there, but I think there's a real difference. Just having a thicker oil yeah, there's like no tick at all. Wow, cool. So anyways, you can see the water, the water will rise when it's idle, and I got the idle so low, um, it's running pretty good. So the water will rise. I like this setup because I can just keep that water where I can see it, and that way I know it's not running out, either because it's overflowing, or it's not about to overflow, or it's not running out because um, I'm running it too hard for too long and it's starving of water. I don't think it really matters. As long as there's some water coming in, it's fine. You just What happens is the water comes through that, that hose, goes through the cooler for the transmission, and then runs down along here into the impeller. And the real key thing when you're running it out of the water is not that the engine will overheat. I mean, it will do that if you run it too long. The main thing is that impeller will run dry. And if the impeller runs dry, the, the rubber will get all eaten up, and then that rubber gets sucked up through here into your thermostat and if the thermostat's open it's going to go all the way through the engine. If it's not open it'll try to bypass and it'll run through here and clog your manifolds. I learned this the hard, hard way. My rear uh, starboard muffler hose, there's these big huge hoses that come off the risers there and they were all bubbled and full of um, the back one was completely sealed off because they had gotten so hot because it was running uh, straight exhaust gases, which is like fire. I mean, it's like, like lighting up fire through a rubber hose. So um, the way boats work is they, they cool the engine just like a car with a water pump, but then it pumps that water out through the exhaust, which cools the exhaust down so you don't have blazing hot exhaust shooting out into the water. It's warm back there, but it's not super hot because the, the water cools it down. It's a really cool system. Um, and it's working great. Yeah, I'm super happy with how it's running. So, anyways, that's how to run a boat out of the water. These old ski boats are really easy. It's better than having to, you know, attach the mufflers on the side of an inboard outboard drive. You just take a hose off with a hose clamp and run it in a bucket and go after it. All right. It's good enough for us.